I am the uh, one of the career coaches. There are five of us, and we are funded by the Department of Labor, um, a grant that was started in uh, fall of 2012, and it goes through September of 2015. And the purpose of the grant was to help IT students. IT being information technology, specifically networking, programming, GIS, and cybersecurity. Sometimes we help out um, health information technology classes. We work with continuing education students who are just taking that one A-plus class, the first class that you ever take if you're an IT person. Um, so we do all kinds of things. The five career coaches, we help you with all aspects of job search. And that's what one part of what we do is the workshops. And the workshop tonight is on LinkedIn. The purpose of the workshop tonight is to introduce you to LinkedIn. And as Rowan, Rowan, Rowan no. said, he kind of wants to know why. Why should I even use LinkedIn? What's, what's the purpose of it? Why is it important to me? Um, how can it help me? And, and basically, the email that I sent out today said, employers are looking at LinkedIn, are you? We work with employers constantly. And we have them present our interview workshops, we have them present whatever. And we have job fairs and we have tables in the hallway where employers are and we have a lot of contact with them. And we keep hearing, you could be the number one resume in their pile. And they go right to LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, they, they move on. And, and my cybersecurity students are like, ugh, I don't want a LinkedIn, I don't want my stuff out there. I hear that all the time. I will tell you, Never will I tell you, you have to, you must have a LinkedIn account. I will tell you that your job search will last longer if you don't. And that's a choice that you get to make. Some people are just like anti-social media, and I understand that. But there are a lot of different ways that you can use LinkedIn professionally that uh, kind of protects your identity. I had one student tell me one time, you know, it's pretty obvious my last name is unusual. They figure out that I work at Collin College in Frisco. I mean, there's a lot of pieces. And she said, then I could just go get the phone book and look me up, find out where I live. Okay, but why would they want to? You know, I, I, they might, but they could do that in any other way, um, not just through LinkedIn. And, and, and the thing I like about LinkedIn is that it's very professional in general. 95% of the time, you're going to find professional activity, not personal on LinkedIn. Do you have a resume? That's the first question I have for you. Yes, 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 okay. Do you use Facebook? If an employer went and looked at my profile, which they do, trust me, um, my stuff is all, like I, I follow a lot of veteran stuff because I know if an employer is looking at that, that's okay. It's showing, without me telling them on my resume, it's showing them a little bit about my passions and my values. But I don't have anything about my religious preferences or my marital status on Facebook because they can see it. Employers will look you up. That is the first thing they do. When at some point, jump onto a computer you've never signed into, sign in and Google your name and see what comes up. Because there, if you do it on your own computer, your own phone, or the computer you've already signed into, it actually changes the what you see. But an employer will do that, and so that's why you need to do it. Google your own name and see. And if you have a really common name like, you know, John Smith, it's not a big deal because the employer is going to look and go, oh, yeah, I can't even figure out which one it is. But I have a very unusual name, Diana Sukut, and it always traces back to me. You can always, no matter where you Google it from, you can see you can, it comes to me. What is LinkedIn? LinkedIn is a social network, but it's professional. It's not like Facebook. It's not hardly even comparable to Facebook, except that it's similar in the way that it's built, so it's not as complicated to figure out. If you've been in Facebook, you know how to use LinkedIn already, how to build it and how to use it. It's your online resume. One thing that's cool about LinkedIn is that your resume needs to be one page or maybe two, depending on your experience. Your LinkedIn can be built out and have much more information. It's a 360 degree picture of who you are for the employer to see. It's a tool to research employers. How can you research employers on LinkedIn? You look them up. You type in their name, you Google, you check them out, and you, you read about them. Why is it important to know about, what, about your employers? Let's say you have an interview on Tuesday, and you're going to be meeting with a person and you know their name. You look them up on LinkedIn, 
then you can find out what groups do they belong to, what school do they get their master's degree or their bachelor's degree from, what, um, what programming languages do, are they showing up in their, in their profile. And that's the conversation piece for you. Sometimes people have a little bit of personal information, um, like I might have something about the wounded veterans that I work with or something like that. I don't know. You know, I don't know what's all in mind. And that might be a conversation piece, but mostly it's per professional, but there might be that one nugget. There might be that one thing. You guys both went to the same undergrad school two years, you know, before or something. I don't know. There's something that could be a nugget there. The most important thing about researching employers is what groups do they belong to? Because you have the opportunity to join those groups and read the articles and the discussions that are going on, and I will show you that. Um, so that when you're going to the interview, you can say, hey, I see that you and I are both involved in XYZ group. Did you see that article about, and look how smart you sound all of a sudden. They sound, you sound like you have been on it. And employers will find you. I have been recruited out of LinkedIn a number of times. I still am, even in this job. And the reason that my resume shows up is because I have the words cybersecurity, CCNA, Cisco. I have those words in my profile. Um, I have other words. I have career development words and things like that. And so an employer can, can find me. And, I, and people try to recruit me all the time because of my LinkedIn profile. We have a guy who just took, he, the summer, the summer only, he took A+, plus, Net+, plus, Security+, plus. But he also took all the programming classes that he could take. He took both, which is weird because it's both sides of your brain, over at Courtyard. So like starting in May, he took maybe seven, eight classes this summer. He's on my, I got an email today that says, congratulate so-and-so on his new job. And I mentioned it at a staff meeting today. And one of my coaches said, yeah, he, I've been talking to him. And he uh, was recruited off of LinkedIn. He's never worked in IT before. He, he, was, he was an engineer. And so, wow, I mean, that's true story that just happened today. So it works. But you just go to LinkedIn.com, and it's just like any other website that you build a profile on. It's just like Facebook. It's just like anything else. It's just like when you go into a job and you apply and you just fill in all the information. Easy. Does it take a long time? Yes, it does. Because it's, it has to be good. It has to be clean. It has to be right because this is your presentation of yourself. This is your marketing material of who you are and what you have to offer them. You get to choose if you're employed, a job seeker, or a student, or, or a combination. Um, if, you, if you put student, it's gonna ask you for school and things like that. It's pretty straightforward. Right away, once you build that first screen, and it's gonna ask you to go into your personal email address, your Yahoo, your Gmail, your Hotmail, your whatever you've got, and pull those names of those people who you are connected with in your personal email and invite them to connect with you on LinkedIn. You do not want to do that. Everybody I know has done that because it, it looks like you have to do it, looks like the next step. What you're actually doing is giving them permission to get into your email address. You're giving them your password to your email address, basically. And they say that it's not going to cause a problem and that you're not going to be hacked. But then, like I've got, you know, 300 people in my Yahoo that I, the Yahoo that I've had, I mean, it actually has like 2002 in the address, right? That's how long I've had it. I don't want all those people on my LinkedIn. Five golden rules. Professional photo. Create the right headline. What are, what are you wanting to announce to the world about who you are and what you represent? I've got my title as career coach at Collin College. That's the headline. And so what you want to do is you want to pick powerful words that describe what you want. It could be a CCNA or a professional seeking employment. Short and sweet and to the point. Write a keyword rich summary that sells your skills and experience. One of the things I really love about LinkedIn is that when I'm helping a person build a resume, I will go into LinkedIn. Because I use LinkedIn every day, mine is very active. The more you use it, the better it works. It kind of gets used to you. It gets your trends. And so say I'm writing a resume for biotech, which I know nothing at all about, or business management, which I know about, but it's been a while since I've written a business management resume, or networking, Cisco networking. I can go in here into LinkedIn and type in CCNA, find 
25 people who have a profile that has the word CCNA in it and look at their profiles. And then I can help you write your resume or you can help yourself write your resume. What keywords do your competitors have in their resumes? That's what you need to have in yours. That's how I use it. I use LinkedIn for everything. I am in my LinkedIn account every single day. It took me a long time to build it. It takes me minimal time to maintain it because I'm good at it. I've gotten good at it and I like it. I, I, I caution you because it is kind of cool that you'll spend too much time on it if you don't schedule it into your day. You'll either spend too much time on it or you won't do it at all because it seems overwhelming. So schedule some time to look at your LinkedIn. Number four, get strong, helpful recommendations. Recommendations are short, three to four, two to four sentences about your ability to perform the job. This is from your, your equals, your bosses, the people you supervise. Um, I don't have it set up this way at Collin College, but when I worked at Concordia University in Minnesota, I had the dean, I mean I had a dean, I had a, my boss, I had equal, I had my graduate intern that I supervised, and I had my student workers. And I even had a student or two that did recommendations for me because that shows very different levels of communication. I mean, the students that I'm working with is just like this, right? Um, you know, this is what I do, this is how I help you. But the student worker, you know, they were my, my person that made all the copies and did all the stuff and kept me in line when I was running crazy and stuff. And that's a very different kind of communication skill. So that was kind of neat to have that level, the levels. And then number five is tie your LinkedIn profile to other efforts. Are you, do you own a business that you want the employer to know about? Do you have an e-folio? Ooh, we'll talk about that in a second, that you want them to see. Are you part of a group or a project that you're working on that you can put pieces of it on LinkedIn? Right here, you see this right here? You can change that and you need to. And let me show you how. So I'm gonna go back to my own edit profile. Right here, there's a word that says edit, simple. And you wanna click on that and then you want to make it clean. Um, and make it change, it's down here. So see how it just says in slash Diana Sukut instead of all those letters and numbers? That is one of the first things you guys wanna change. Do the best you can to put your first and last name Customize. in order as it is. And that you can put on your resume, boom. Profile, um, you wanna use keywords in the summary and skills section. You wanna review job descriptions of jobs that you're interested in, make sure you have those keywords. <coughs> review other profiles. And the pipe key is the one that makes the straight line so that you can kind of separate your, your keywords here. Summary, there's a lot of different ways you can do summary. Mine is short and sweet to the point. Um, I, I hit the National Certified Counselor first because even though it's in my name, that's what I want to do. If I was to be looking for a job, I want to be a counselor. That's what I do here. So that's the most important thing in my whole world is that certification. So put that first. And then I've got some super important things that I want people to know that I'm good at right there. You can do paragraph form. You can copy paste straight off of your resume for the summary. You can do lists. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Photos, um, clean professional headshot, positive image. Don't crop anything out and don't have objects in your hand. It is more favorable to the employer that you have a picture. Please do not put a picture of your cat or something. Now, I did see an artist once who put a picture of her art. It was weird, it was different, but it did make me open her profile. And uh, it was cool. You know, it worked out really well. Additional information, it's gonna tell you things that you might wanna fill in based on what you've put in there so far. You definitely want to um, keep it professional. Sometimes people put personal interests and that's okay as long as it does not allow for discrimination of anything. And personal details, no. Don't put the personal details in. We do not need your birthday. We do not need your marital status. That is information the employer does not need about you. It'll have recommended for you. You guys need to put projects in there, especially if you don't have any work experience in the field you're studying. What projects did you do in your CCNA 4 class? What programming languages have you actually done something with? Is there a place in here in the projects that that's where you want to direct them to your, your e-folio? your portfolio or your other website or whatever. Organizations, do you belong to ISSA, which is the um, cybersecurity professional group? Are you going to the cybersecurity conference? Is that something that you can put in publications or in education or, you know, what can you put in here to show them that you've got 
what you tell them that you've got to prove it and back it up. <clears throat> then basically it's just your, your resume part. And I have found from many amounts of experience, it is much easier to copy paste section by section of your resume. Please do not try to add, uh, upload your resume. Excuse it. It frustrates you. It looks bad. Just don't do it. If you've already done it, it took you a long time to fix it. And so it's already fixed. Good. Leave it. Um, but if you're going to be adding things in, so make sure that you're happy with your resume first before you even tackle LinkedIn. If you're happy with your resume, you're ready to go. You can add a link. You can upload a file. People always think they should upload their resume. They're not going to open it. Why? They've got it all right there. But you can add a PowerPoint presentation that you've done. You can add um, a link. Like I could add the NIS GTC website right here if I wanted to. Then you've got your certifications. I've got my two in there. You have to add those things in. That's why they're there because I've added them in at some point. The next section is skills. Okay, when an employer looks at a profile, they look at your picture, your summary, your skills, your groups. That's all they look at, for the most part. They may very quickly look at your employment experience to see if there's anything different there that's not on your resume. And when you are looking, okay, so when you're gonna decide if a person is, if you're gonna connect with the person or not, those are the things you look at as well. You look at their summary, their skills, and then their groups. What groups do they belong to that they, you wanna to belong to? I don't know why, but employers really pay a lot of attention to this. They really want to know. And so all those pictures of people have basically said, thumbs up, Diana's good at career counseling. That's all. That's all they've done. They've liked my skill. That's it. I didn't ask them to do that. You can't, I don't think you can ask them, but you know, you probably could. You could probably send an email like, hey, Amanda, I'm really trying to build up my community outreach skill. Would you mind, she's my friend, endorsing me for that? You could do that, sure, but that would take a lot of time. Um, but you can do it to target, you know, things on your on your profile. But how how do the skills get endorsed? What happens is every time people go into your profile, that at the top of their screen, there's a button that says, Amanda has workshop facilitation skills. Do you endorse, yes or no? And you just click on yes, and that's, that's how come you see people who have endorsed you who have no idea if you have that skill or not because they have been asked on the top of their screen, you know, maybe there's four people that they're asking, does Amanda have this skill, does um, Church have this skill, does Brandon have this skill, and you just go, yes, and so all of them say yes. I don't know why employers pay so much attention to this because it's easy for people to just say yes, you have the skill, but they do, they really do. So now we're on the grow your network part. This is what I told you already. This is what it looks like right here where it says get started by adding your email address. So you add it in there and the next button you click on continue, it asks you for your password. So you're essentially putting in your password for Gmail and giving them permission to go into your Gmail. That's not what you want to do. What I would do is I would later when I was, and, and by the way, you don't want to connect with anyone until you're happy with your profile. Unless you already have an account. Um, you know, then you're already connected, that's okay, but really don't do anything else with, with connecting until you're happy with your profile. Um, I would go into my Gmail, go through, I'm old school, I would go and write down the names of the people that I want to, and then I'd go back over to LinkedIn and type in their name or their email address and see if I could find them that way. But I would not allow LinkedIn into my Gmail. You can search for, con for people, you can search for everything, um, you can add connections, you can, you can delete, you can block, all kinds of things you can do with connections. I just clicked on connections and why do I care that Bonnie Brang is having a work anniversary? Why does that matter to me as a job seeker? What do you think? Okay, I'll tell you. Because I haven't done anything cool on LinkedIn in a while, I haven't posted an article, I haven't made any updates, so I can say, congrats Bonnie, good job, proud of you, or woo, way to go. And then my name shows up on everybody's that she's connected to and everybody that I'm connected to. Diana said, congrats to Bonnie. It doesn't matter that that's all I did, it brings my name up again. And it shows that I'm actively using LinkedIn. So I do do it occasionally. When you ask someone to connect with you, um, it will ask you how you know them. Are they a colleague? And I'll tell you, know, then you, then you have to pick, it says, uh, if it says colleague, then it, the next box says, what, where are you colleagues from? This right here, I use LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn to keep track of my professional network and all that. That's standard. You can change it and please do change it. 
Just tell the person why you want to connect with them. We were in class together, we were in CCNA 3 together, or you work at a company of interest to me that eventually I would like to work at, so I'd like to connect with you now, or whatever. We're both in the business management group, and I, I see that you have some skills similar to mine. I'd like to connect with you. Tell the person why you want to connect. I have 166, I think it said. I probably know by face 150 of them ish. I probably don't know at all. Let's go with 10% or 20, let's go with 20%. I don't know, but I have selected to in, uh, connect with them because of their job, their company, something. Somebody I'm connected with is connected to them and it felt like it was a good match. So that's why. And it tells you how you're connected. You, those two people, the people that they're connected to, and then this person. And this is how it works with connections. Groups, I'm going to talk a whole lot about groups. You'll see the last bullet point says join the NISGTC at Collin College for job postings, job search articles, and more. So I have a lot of groups. I have 38 groups. Whoa, that's a lot of groups. What do I do with them? Well, a handful of them, I have them come into my email that tells me what's going on with them every day. At 147, it's weird. At 147 every day, I get eight emails. Boom, 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 boom. What's going on in my groups? And I quick read them, and they're my top groups that I follow the most. The thing that you can do is you can go into any group and you can see that there's three updates. You can see that there are three discussions. Okay, so this is American Counseling Association. I'm going to see what the discussions are about. Are they talking about, um, okay, this is a, like a private practice counselor who's asking a policy question. Um, here's a blog that I can read and I can follow and I can comment on. Why is that important to me as a job seeker? Your name comes up and it shows that you know what you're talking about. That's why. It shows your expertise in your field and it shows people in your field that you know what you're doing. Jobs, that's jobs that are posted to that group. Now, how do jobs get posted to groups? How do they get put up in American Counseling Association? Well, by the members. And what happens is that if members will go to their groups and post the jobs there and they are not posted anywhere else for a day or two and then they're posted on the company website or whatever. 23 updates and 23 jobs. Woohoo! Let's look at this. Now these jobs, are they at Cisco? Maybe, but they're also other jobs that need Cisco certifications. So here's a system administrator for cloud at Cell Bytel Group Spain. Okay, well, you know, do you wanna to move to Spain? I don't know, but you can, you can change it. You can do it by who, who are you connected to? Let's do it by this. Let's do it by who, what jobs are in here that I have some sort of connection to. And then I can show you how that works. So here's the senior collaboration engineer in greater Atlanta area. And if one, wait, somewhere on here, I think you have to open it. It tells you who you're connected to that has some sort of connection to that job, which is so cool because then you can connect with them. Now, are those jobs posted on Presidio and Amazon? Probably. But if you, if you apply through it through here, they're going to know how you applied for it through LinkedIn and they'll be able to go right in and look at your profile. Something else about groups is that you can look at members, and I do that sometimes. I'll go through some of my professional development groups that are mine and look for members to see if there's members that I want to connect with that I had forgotten about. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. This is really critical. You have the opportunity to change your settings on a lot of different things. The way you do that is you click on your picture. You'll, you'll want to go into your settings, take off um, where it says view my, um, Broadcast my activity and uncheck it. You click on your picture. You click on privacy and settings review. You click on turn on off your activity broadcasts and you uncheck that. If you don't, as you're building your profile and updating it and changing it, everyone you're already connected to, if you're already connected to people, is going to get a note on their homepage that says, Trisha updated her education. Amanda updated her education and then every single thing you do and so your friends or people are going to be like whoa okay I get it you're updating your profile so you want to uncheck that. I am currently on the home page. Home page just has news what's going on. You can tailor the home page news to things of interest to you. If you'll look all of mine have to do with job search or something like that or higher education or IT. I made that happen by going into here and you know, changing it, customizing it. 
then you've got articles and things that are going on and things that you might be interested in or things that other people in your um, connection are following, people you may know. You can always click on more and go through them. I do this about once a month. I just kind of go through and look and see if there's anybody I, I wanted to connect with that I forgot about. Uh, for you, while you're building it, you're going to want to do it every time you sign in for a while. You can, all, you can look at their profile. You can look and see who's connected to them that you're connected to. And people who have viewed my profile, I can see that my profile has been viewed 11 times in the past 15 days. Jobs I might be interested in, I hardly ever look at those, but those are going to be tailored for you. And when you get that C++ and that Python and that .NET and those words in there, those are the jobs that are going to show up. Groups you may like, you know what, they're usually right. But you can only have so many groups, I think 25 or 30, and then it won't let you join anymore. Companies you may want to follow, you know, it's pretty clear. Why would you want to follow a company? Oh, here's what happens when you follow a company. A couple things. One, you follow a company and somebody who works there changes job titles. And they're at another company or they're a different title at that company. On your homepage, it will say, University of Minnesota had, um, uh, you know, John Smith changed jobs. Ah. Is John Smith's other job open? That's how you use it. Are they in the news? Did they cause a ruckus? Did they just win a million dollar grant? Is something cool going on with them? If you follow them, you will know it on LinkedIn right away before you have to dig it up. It's cool. If you're gonna be trying to get into certain companies, you might wanna follow them on here. All right, one more thing. That, that help center in LinkedIn is awesome. It's short, it's easy. Anything you have questions about, try to find it in there. I promise you I don't know everything there is to know about LinkedIn. And so you may ask me and I'm good question. Let's find out.